Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Osterberger. We're here at the Gulf Coast Industry Forum. I'm here with Ryan Sitton, CEO and founder of Pinnacle. Hey Ryan, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So Ryan, just got off the stage here at the Gulf Coast Industry Forum. Hey, before we get into your presentation, tell us about Pinnacle. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate you asking. We're probably the world's largest reliability company. What I mean by that is if a large facility like a refinery, a chemical plant, a mining operation, a water treatment facility, any of them say, man, we, we got to get more reliable, right? Less downtime, more efficient use of money. Mm -hmm. We have the, the resources and the technology. We go in and set up better programs for them, help them optimize cost, and at the same time, boost their throughput through pretty advanced analytics and, and advanced systems. Okay. And Ryan, the company's been around how long? Uh, 16 years. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, happy for you. Thank you. So Ryan, look, from 2010 to 2020, you mentioned that refinery optimi optimization and improvement along with, um, you know, digital transformation has, has slowly been happening. But but talk about that transition now. Where are we at? Where are we headed? Yeah. Uh, in fact, as you said, I mentioned from 2010 to 2020, the availability or the amount of time that a refinery ran in the United States versus its maximum only went up by one, one and a half percent. Got it. And that was a pretty small gain compared to the previous three decades where it went up by more than 15 percent and so what we're seeing is that the the challenges in these plants and it doesn't have to be just a refinery you could be talking about a chemical plant or a, once again a big mining operation the challenges are getting more complicated and more things have to happen to make an improvement versus just fixing one small change so this digital transformation that we're hearing about machine learning artificial intelligence internet of things all that is directed at trying to get more complex models, more complex analysis of these systems so that refineries can make the bigger improvements again like they did, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So, Orion, you also got into the current workforce challenges in the U.S. Talk a little bit about that and talk about the energy sector and where we stand. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, the, the, generally the economy is just almost bizarre right now. I mean, you, you see it on the one hand. We keep reporting on employment levels, and you hear messages from, say, the media or from government that says, we got to get more stimulus checks out to people who are depending on these. At the same time, walk into any restaurant, mm -hmm. now hiring, right, overtime, minimum, sign-on bonuses. Uh, it's like there's this weird dichotomy. And, and what's the result of that is that across places who want to hire and do business, man, it's really hard to find a workforce. I mentioned today we've had a higher turnover in the United States in the last 12 months than in history. And so this is creating a lot of destabilization in business, in the economy, and even in, even in the ability to do just regular transactions. So the, the challenge in front of us is how to, how to get back to a little bit more normal state to balance the workforce load with the product productivity load. And that's going to require, I think, some time, but it's also going to require some intentionality on behalf of business and behalf of government to, hey, let's let this stuff play out. And then let's be very intentional about we, we want employees who are going to be here for the long haul, and that's what we're going to reward. So let's get into the oil and gas sector. Uh, can traditional labor and oil and gas transition to renewables, and, and what does that look like? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, right, if you ask me today, Ryan, d is, does that have to happen? Mm -hmm. I, I made a comment to a couple of folks today that, you know, we're not seeing the investment in oil and gas. And as I mentioned, from an economic perspective, economists are saying we're going to be using oil and gas for decades. So if someone today is working in a refinery or on an oil field or something like that, and they say, man, I'm scared for my job. I get it. A lot of messages out there that are challenging. At the same time, those jobs are going to be there for a long time. Now, I'm not saying not to try to learn and, and, and go into new things, but we're going to continue to need those products. In fact, there may be better opportunities mm -hmm. in these traditional industries because a lot of other people are trying to go into the sexy new thing. So what I would say to people is, as opposed to trying to transition to new energy, say, what can I be learning to just broaden my skill set wherever I go, whether it's learning more about data or statistics or learning how to use more advanced analyses or, like I talked about, how do I make more quantitative decisions to help move my business forward? Those would be valuable wherever you go. So, Ryan, I'll let you plug the book. You wrote Crucial Decisions. Yes. Uh, what led to that decision? You like what I did there? <laughs> yeah, I did. Nice. Um, the short version is, as we looked back at, at coronavirus hitting us last year and all the sort of bizarre things happening and how it was affecting people's livelihoods and economies were being shut down and we, we didn't really understand if people were safe or not safe, it, it became apparent that, man, we, we, we as a society and certainly some of our political leaders just weren't in a position to make good confident decisions. And I wrote that book by looking at a whole lot of data from different industries, different platforms, different sources, and realizing, man, there are a lot better ways for us to do this. And the book is about how to, how to implement a better quantitative decision process and how valuable that quantita quantitative decision process can be regardless of where you work. Well, Ryan, look, we know you're busy. Thank you for your time here at the Gulf Coast Industry Forum. And until uh, next time. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate being here.